Hello, this is Rocket Man Dan. Today we're going to be attempting a flyby of the moon. But first, it's a little dark outside today. So what we're going to do is press triangle, bring up this radial menu, press up on the left analog stick, and warp to next morning. That's better. Well, let's go to Mission C Control and see what they've got for us. There we go. Explore the moon. Fly by the moon, we get 64,004 science. And we get an advance of 22,400. Okay, let's accept that mission. Return to the space center. And we're just going to pop in to the space plane hangar. I'm just going to do a quick bit of science on the run runway. I'll fast, I'll fast forward through it. But it's just so we can... Just reach over that 90 science so we can grab a couple of parts in the R&D facility. Okay, there we go. That little jaunt on the runway earned us 24, no 20.4 science should I say. Rich. In total, we've got 107.9 now. So let's just go to the R&D department. There we go. And we're just going to grab a couple of things. We're going to get this set of things here, where you get the Terrier engine. Great in the vacuum of space. Not much thrust, but it's very fuel efficient. And we get these radial thud engines. A larger fu liquid fuel tank. A fuel adapter and another fuel tank. So we're going to get those. I'm also going to get these winglets here for stability, the AVR8 winglet, which are steerable. So if you're still using SRBs, they help you steer quite a lot. Okay, so I'll just get those as well. There we go. We ain't got much science left now, so we better earn some. Uh, let's just upgrade the VAB. So I'm going to go over to the VAB, press square, and I'm just going to mouse over where it says upgrade there. And it lets us have a max part supported 255 and basic action groups. And I'll show you what I mean about the basic action groups once, once we start building. So upgrade that, and that's brought us cash down quite a bit. Let's go into the VAB. Okay, first what we'll need for a flyby of the moon is uh, a command pod. There we go. And we'll want a little bit of science on this. But what we're going to do this time is we're going to put this experiment storage unit on, which lets you collect your experiments without the need of doing an EVA if you haven't unlocked that quite yet. So we're going to put that on. We shall put a barometer on as well and the thermometer. Now if you don't want to watch the build, I'll, I'll put a little time stamp on the screen there and you can just skip ahead to when I'm in orbit. Okay, but for the rest of us, we'll, we'll, just, uh, we'll just see how this is built. And we're going to put on a heat shield. Just there, yeah, one of those. I want to reduce that a bit. A uh, hundred, that'll be plenty. Be too much even, but you know, better safe than sorry. I'm going to put a parachute on top of this thing. Just there. Oh, actually, I'm just going to move that thermometer up a little bit. I don't like it just sticking over there. We're going to add a decoupler, a stack decoupler. There we go. Now we're just going to add a couple bit bits of science now. We'll see we'll be jettisoning jettisoning the science junior and the goo pods this time because we can collect them all with our experiment storage unit. I'm gonna put those up there, pop a couple of batteries on there. There we go and if you're wondering how I'm turning parts like that, I'm just using the directional buttons on the D-pad. There we go. Let's add a uh, a fuel tank, eh? Going to want a FLT 400 fuel tank. 
I'm going to want that efficient terrier engine. There we go. Also going to put another stack decoupler on there. Because that top stays there, that's what we'll be mainly using in space. And that should be enough to fly around the moon and come back again. I uh, want a couple more fuel tanks. Oh, there we go. I'm going to put the swivel on this one. So it's got that nice gimbal we talked about in the last episode. There, see. Also going to attach a couple of radial decouplers. Because we'll be putting SRBs on these. Um, I'm saying somewhere about there. We can always move them if they're not in the right position. There we go, they're on level. I'm going to use the move tool again and bring them down. Oh, that's up. And it doesn't seem to know what it wants to do with itself. There, that's fine. Some nose cones will be nice. There we go. And let's put these AVR8 winglets on. I want four of those on. So, four times radial symmetry. Try not to hit anything with double radial symmetry on. Try and get them as level as you can. There we go, perfect. I remember earlier we talked about action groups. Well, it's this little tab right up here, actions. We're going to click on that with X. And this vehicle, we have no brakes, so we can use the brakes action group. And when I press brakes, which is square by the way, I can log my pressure data. I'm selecting these, by the way, by using the X. Just pressing X on them, mousing over here to log temperature, or on the command pod, do a crew report. And when I press square, it'll do all these science experiments for me, and I get to choose whether to keep them. Now, with this unit up here, I'm going to use the RCS tab, because we've no need for RCS. Actually, let's take out the mono propellant because we don't need it, it's just weighing us down. There we go. So when I press RCS, I want this top piece here to collect all science. There we go. Now, I don't believe we've forgotten everything. We've got batteries. We haven't got any solar panels yet, unfortunately, so we'll, it'll have to be a quick trip. We don't want to run out of power whilst we're on there, do we? Um, oh, let's just turn the thrust down on these thumpers again. I think I'll uh, I'll turn these down to about 90-ish, I suppose. About 90. There we go. Okay, this is ready to launch. Okay, so we discussed how to get orbital in the last episode. So what I'll do is I'll get Orbital, I'll fast forward through it, so you can still watch it. Okay, three, two, one, launch. Okay, we're in orbit now. There we go, still got plenty of fuel left. I'll just open the fuel tab just so we can always make sure. There we go. And what else I'll do? You just turn the light on in case it's just a bit dark because YouTube does have a, a way of compressing the images. Now you're wondering how we're going to get to the moon. Well, like I said last time, what you do on one side of your orbit affects the other side and to get to the moon there's a real easy trick as you're going round like this and you see the moon you want to start burning prograde then and you're thinking oh I've got to mouse over to here tap on prograde 
or retrograde. Now we've got that one star jab got us. But there's no need to do that. What you can do is hold L1, press triangle, this radial menu comes up. You just go over to the direction you want. It even tells you just normal stability assist, prograde or retrograde or all the others once you unlock those. We don't need prograde for now so tap on prograde with X triangle to get rid of the radial menu and that's it we'll, we'll hold it prograde so what I'm going to do is just fast forward round till I can see the moon rising over curb in there and as soon as it does I'm going to start burning and then go into map view there we go the moon's on the rise I'm going to start burning prograde now I'm going to stretch out the other side of my orbit it's going to bring it over here, but by the time we get over there, the moon will have gotten over there as well. Which is what we want. We only want to do a flyby today. Unfortunately, you don't know when you've actually got an interception because we haven't upgraded the tracking station or mission control yet. This is okay. With that handy little trick of just waiting for the moon to be on the rise, Start burning, go into your map screen and watch this. And you just want this, your apoapsis to about intersect there with the moon's orbit. And stop thrust. Uh, I'm just going to give it a tad more. Nothing, there we go. And now we should be on the way to the moon. So what I'm going to do is just fast forward to about midpoint where I can do a bit of science. And I'll show you what I mean about those action groups. There we go. Lock into prograde again. And what I'm going to do, you see, is press square. There we go, see? I've got a temperature scan. Keep, keep, keep. And a goo containment unit. I'm going to look at one of those now. Keep that. And now I'm going to hold L1 again and tap circle to turn on my SAS. L1 and circle. But what it really does is takes all my science experiments. So I'm going to go back into the map view. And when I start to intercept with the moon, it should tell us. There we go. See, we've got an intercept with the moon. But it looks like we're actually going to hit the moon. So what we want to do is burn radial out. That's normal. I think that's radial out there. No, that's radial in. Okay, let's just flip on over. There we go. Radial out. It's got the outward arms on it. I'm going to get quite a high periapsis on the mum because I don't want us being flung out of the system. So I'm going to go for about there about 241,000 I'm also gonna try and bring that down a bit I'm just using the normal on the nav ball there normal if you have a way of looking at it is up anti-normal down see I'm bringing up where I'm going to be leaving the moon sphere of influence see now I'm going to do some more science in the moon's sphere of influence by tapping square again that's okay I can keep resetting these experiments each time well that's it now I shouldn't need them anymore after this I might grab one just as we're going through Kerbin's atmosphere do that I'm going to activate RCS again L1 and circle. It's collected all that. I'm even going to face in the retrograde position. It means pointing away. I'm just going to fast forward through this now. There we go. I've left the moon's sphere of influence now. I've got a periapsis on Kerbin of 2,213,000. So I'm going to wait, I'm going to fast forward all the way around to my apoapsis, burn retrograde there, 
and bring this in. I want to bring it into about 35,000 ish because we'll be going quite fast by the time we reach Gaben's atmosphere, about 3,200 meters per second. Okay, so let's just fast forward through this. About there we'll do fine. I'm just going to bring that in. What's that at? 35,000, perfect. And I'm just going to fast forward. You've got to be careful when you're fast forwarding because if you let it go too far, it'll fling you through the atmosphere and back round again. And it's a bit of an inconvenience, but you don't. when you're going too fast, you don't want to stop fast forwarding mid-atmosphere because you'll just explode straight away more than likely. It can be a little bit tricky to get used to the controls. I like doing it with the cursor. Oh, there we go. I swung right in. That's fine, everything's fine. We're burning off this ablator now. See what I mean though, it's tricky to get round it, so if you're not trying to rush like me, just take your time when you're coming through the atmosphere. There we go, I'm going to grab another little bit of science there. I'm going to fast forward the rest of this till we land, okay? There we go. Let's just fast forward this again till we land. And then we can get back home to the space station. Beautiful. Okay, we're just going to recover that vessel. And look at that. Not a bad little hole at all. 189 science. Oh my. Yeah, that's not bad, but we shall unlock some new things next time. Speaking of next time, we should be landing on the moon if anyone's been waiting for that. Jeb's earned 2 XP. Okay, that's the end of today's episode. I've been Rocketman Dan. If you'd like to like, share, subscribe, maybe leave me a comment, that'd be great. The much appreciated. Thanks very much. See you next time. Bye-bye.